All right, so today we're trying to kind of see what's in these bays. Um, this is the furthest bay uh, forward, and this is the original factory uh, like heating system and AC system and stuff like that. And um, these pipes, I think they carry coolant. I'm not 100% sure. So that's my one kind of hang up with this is um, this thing takes up a lot of room. And as you can see, it's just it's just kind of wasted space. So we're trying to see if we can get some of this out of here and recover uh, some of that space. But the problem is that we're a little bit worried since these tie into the coolant lines that will spring a leak or something somewhere. So we're trying to be kind of careful and um, take it apart kind of real systematically and stuff like that. And um, we posted online and they had suggested that we buy the bilge pump that came with this and kind of try to hook this all back up. But it's, you know, it's over 50 years old. It probably hasn't worked in 40 years. It'd probably spring some kind of leak or something. So we're trying to get rid of it. Um, we're both a little under the weather, but we're still out here kind of trying to get as much done as we can. Um, man, these, the bolts are all rusted and stuff like that, and we're having a hard time getting stuff out of here. So, but it's still a good time, um, and we're, this is the project for today. One down, how many more to go? A lot, but you can see how rusty it is. Oh yeah. It's just, there's no way it's gonna come out. How many more of those are there? <laughs> there's three of those ones, and then there's a ton of these, but these are a lot smaller. So I'm hoping those will go a little easier. Here's the hope <laughs> Um, so let's see, I'm going to try to to do this first, but you saw how the back of this one looks. Um, I don't think there's a lot of hope for getting these unscrewed, um, but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, it does hold on back here, and I can, you can see the rust, like when I move it, you can kind of just see the rust sort of falling off of it, so... Anyway, I'm going to try it, because why not? <sighs> well, I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not budding. So, um, anyway, um, I guess we'll keep cutting them off. Um, there's three on this side, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on this side. One along the top, two along the bottom. Um, that not too bad. So we'll see. Safety first. Safety first.
Okay, so we got this door out. I've researched more about what these things do. So um, there was a supplementary pump that hooked up to these pipes here that kind of helped it go. This is a heater core to heat the inside. Um, so the water comes from the engine in the back through here. Then there was a supplementary pump that would force it into here, into this uh, radiator heat core. Then it would come up here and then this is a, is a return line back to the, to the back of the bus, back to the engine. So none of this is hooked up. And in theory, um, this should all be sort of dry. Um, and this should be safe to remove. There's no longer the AC, so the, the evaporator coil should be safe to remove as well. Really, we should be safe to remove all this stuff. Unfortunately, let me see, when we go and, and uh, turn this on, there is a good fair amount of fluid coming out of there. So we're gonna try to drain this thing. I've got a pan under here kind of catching it. Um, so we're gonna try to drain it and see. So there are shutoff valves um, similar to these in the back in the engine up underneath the engine. Um, I did turn those and they turned, they're all open. So what this does is this loops and this goes to the front, to the defroster uh, for the front area. Um, this valve is actually closed. Um, I don't, I'm afraid to open it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, we're going to drain this thing, um, so I'm going to open this. There shouldn't be that much fluid in there. This thing is no longer connected. Um, in fact, well, that was anticlimactic. It just, it's, it's out of fluid. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> that was it? That was it. <laughs> so, Aww. um... Yeah, okay, so we're gonna good. try to remove some of these shrouds and stuff and um, just try to reclaim some of this space. This stuff isn't doing anything, it's just eating up space under here. So um, we're gonna try to, um, we're gonna try to, to get these things torn out and see if we can't get these out of here um, and get these shrouds and stuff out of here. So we're thinking. continuing work on the AC part. So last time we took the doors off, um, and that was a little bit of a struggle, and then um, we discovered that there's actually a motor missing here. I don't know if you... So there's a motor missing on this side, but there was one on the other side. So I took that one out. Um, this is a heat exchanger. It's kind of like a big radiator. It just, you know, the heat from the engine heats that up and then it would blow it inside. So yesterday I worked all day just to get one of these shrouds out. So, so you can see the other shroud on the other side. There was one just like it on this side. You can kind of see the holes and stuff on the bottom and on the sides. So today I'll be trying to remove that one. So mostly with a grinder and um, with a sawzall. I ended up using a sawzall to try to cut some of the pieces away. Um, so that's what we'll be doing today. It's a rainy day today in Arizona. It seems like it's been raining for the past three or four weeks. So um, it's good for our state, but man, it's annoying when we're trying to work on a bus. So um, that's the plan for today. Hopefully we get a little further on it. And I still have no idea how to remove the heat exchanger or that other thing. <laughs> So, so um, we'll figure it out as we go, just like always.
Well, the saga continues with uh, this bay and getting it cleared out with the AC stuff. So last week we were able to get out the heat exchanger, which is which was a piece that was on this side, and then um, today we're going to try to get out the evaporator for the AC, which is the bigger part. Um, it's kind of funny, I posted online asking if people had done this before or if anybody had any experience with it. And um, a couple of people suggested maybe trying to get it to work and stuff like that, but it was it was pretty well gone, so that was not an option for us. Um, the other thing was I asked if there was any kind of coolant lines or air lines or things like that, because we need to be able to drive the bus back to the, the place where we keep it. And um, no one really responded, and it didn't kind of look like anything was hooked up that way, so... Um, so we just took everything apart and stuff like that. Well, there are some high, there are some high pressure lines. Um, we found that out when we started the bus and it wouldn't build pressure. We were like, oh no! And you know, it was the end of the day and the, it was a mad scramble to try to get it fixed. Um, but what we ended up finding out is if you end up taking one of these apart, is this line here that goes to the control module that's a high pressure line. Um, that's for high pressure air coming from the system and that will bleed all the stuff out so um, if you do one if the by the off chance that you happen to be doing one of these the line that's connected to the the control module that's up here that is a high speed line and it needs to be capped off um, kind of I used a T valve because uh, or a ball valve because it was you know it was easy and and that's what they had at Home Depot it, you know six o'clock on Sunday before we were scrambling to, to find something to fix it so um, that's that was that and then once we put that on there and started it back up it built pressure right away and and, and behaved exactly the way it's supposed to so um, that was one of the issues uh, the other one was um, just this stuff is hard to take out so we've been just hacksawing and 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 I bought a sawzaw and, and a metal saw and and we've been grinding and all the rivets and everything you can see there's just a ton of rivets um, everywhere so that that's the other issue is there's just there's a lot of rivets in there and so it's been it's been a chore to uh, to try to get this thing completed but um, today we're gonna try to take this out I honestly have no idea how we're gonna get it out of there but we're gonna work on it and hopefully get it out and then we'll start back on the subfloor so start finally building things back up so that's what's on the agenda for today there it is. <laughs> Woo! the beast the beast. So to cut this off. Oh my god. Oh. <coughs> Look at all that space. It cleans up the bay quite a bit. Oh my gosh. All right. So it's the end of the day, and um. Well, we got it out. We got most of it out. Um, you can look in the bay and it's it's pretty empty. Um, so we've recovered a ton of space in here. Um, there, like I said before, there was a few guys that had mentioned um, <clears throat> maybe reusing that stuff. Um, unfortunately, ours was not in any kind of um, position to be reused. It was, there was leaking all over the place. Um, and it was pretty well rotted. Um, I did accidentally pull one of these hoses as I was getting out once I got something in my eye and I kind of, I flipped out a little bit and I started to crawl out as quickly as I could and I reached up and I grabbed one and I pulled one out and a bunch of water started pouring out of it. So they, these are definitely full of water. So um, anyway, um, we're gonna leave these um, just the way they are. And we talked about maybe putting the mini split um, in here but we've been talking about it and we think maybe a better idea now is to put the batteries in here and the inverter. So anyway, um, this is the space now. I'll go back and show you all the stuff we took out. All right, so this is the other side. So on this side, we took a lot more of the stuff of the uh, on the roof out. So if you look here, um, it makes the, the ceiling a bit higher. That's the actual floor of the bus. All right, so we've started a new junk pile back here. This is the stuff we removed from that inner bay. 
These pieces here were all the upper uh, roof pieces for the bay, and then this was the was the roof for the center of the bay. Um, these pieces here were all the pipes and things like that. This one here is powered by air, so on this side here, this is high pressure air. This is where we had our leak last week, and and um, couldn't couldn't run the bus because of this one. So if you guys are taking one apart, high pressure air goes into there and it needs to be blocked off. So this was the heater core that was in there, and it's quite heavy. It's pretty heavy. It's, and then this is, I think they're condenser coils, I'm not 100% sure, but it's part of the AC system, and that was even heavier. So um, that stuff was, like I said, was all taking up a lot of room. And you can see how rough it is. Um, there's no way we could have reused this. This has clearly leaked, probably for a long, long time. So, um, <laughs> So the odds of us being able to reuse that stuff, I think, were pretty slim. So I think um, kind of recovering that space and, and getting used to that space is, is probably maybe a little bit better uh, use for that underneath storage. So anyway, that's the end of the day today. So um, tomorrow, hopefully, we'll start back up on the subfloors and, and start cranking on that stuff.